Leadership Story Talks, where we discuss the practices that engage, motivate, develop, retain, and attract people to businesses. We'll give you principles and tools based on real-world stories to leverage listening and storytelling to become a better leader and management professional. Leadership Story Talks is produced by Narrative, a company that focuses on personal storytelling for business. Welcome to Leadership Story Talks. In this podcast, Julianne Ryan and myself, Jerome DeRoy, discuss ways in which we can create more engagement in our lives, especially at work. There are more people today who identify as disengaged than there are who say they feel engaged at work. And we come from Narrative, which is a company that focuses on engaging businesses and their audiences through the power of listening and storytelling, employing a seven-step method to do so. And today we are taking stock of 2022 in its uh, waning days and some of the lessons that we've learned from some of our, our most popular episodes. We thought we would go back in time and, and just look at a, the entirety of all the people that we've talked with and share with you, our listeners, what we learned from them in a more uh, succinct way. And of course, you can feel free to uh, go back to those episodes and re-listen because they really have a, a wealth uh, of knowledge and information. So Julianne, welcome Hi. and uh, nice to see you. <laughs> oh, it's always a pleasure. It's hard to believe it's a year. My goodness. I know, I know. Yeah, and it's it's our first full year of, of episodes because we started in October of, of last year, 2021. And uh, so, yeah, so, you know, I thought it was kind of interesting. I was looking at the uh, at our statistics and, and seeing what our five most popular episodes were. And so I thought we could maybe go through each of those and um, and share with our listeners what uh, what we remember from them and you know the highlights things that we took away from those um, so the the first one I don't have a drum roll but if I did we, we could do that maybe we could do that in post <laughs> the first yeah. one um, and, and really our most popular actually of 2022 uh, was an interview we did with Zev Shalev who is uh, a journalist and uh, happens to have a company that is also called Narrative um, and uh, he's got a couple of companies, but uh, he's in media and he really calls himself a, a, a truth seeker. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll say, you know, the one thing that certainly stands out with that episode is, uh, I mean, there were many things that, that stood out just in terms of the connection between the two companies, which was kind of funny. Um, but, uh, but also, you know, he told this story, there's a, there's a, there's a question that we ask of all our all our guests and it's talk about an experience that's shaped who you are today. And he told this story of being a, a schoolboy in his uniform in South Africa. And it was the day that Mandela was being released uh, from prison after 30 years. And, um, and he managed to go and see, you know, next to a big stadium um, and actually managed to get into the stadium without a ticket or anything. Uh, but with the help of of many different people along the way, him and his friend, I, I forget, I think they were like 14 years old or something, yeah, or 15 years young. old, right? Very young. And uh, and just at some point gets lifted up into a seat in this in this stadium and just, you know, comes across Mandela really almost face to face. Um, and just such a kind of vivid, vivid uh, rendition of of that experience and clearly something that has stayed with him you know, over the last what, 30 years, 20, 30 years now. And mm -hmm. so, um, so that's the, that's the image that stays with me from that episode. And for me, it was the act of reaching out because humorously, like he has similar names to the company, had your roots to the original companies in Brooklyn. And it was like, just try, just try. And it ended up being this incredible experience of like, reach out and ask somebody for something. So um, to get past their assumptions that they may say no, et cetera. And it was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. And to see all the connections that start to come out of the different paths to our work was quite amazing. And mm -hmm. what he, you know, what his work means to him. So yeah, I'm very proud of that one. Yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. And read his bio. He's quite amazing. <laughs> so, yeah. so it's like, okay, don't read everything when you're going to reach out to somebody because sometimes it, it makes you shyer or makes me a little shyer. But this time I'm really glad I took a chance. And yeah, I think that's a great really lesson. Cool. It was a valuable lesson. That that's just, a great lesson for our listeners. And, you know. and, cross, and you never know. You never know what can happen. Yeah, look for the connection and then reach out based on based on that connection because it's really, you know, from from what I understood and how how we were even talking with one another, 
once once I met, I got to meet him, um, mm. that was the thing, right? It was like the the uh, the intrigue of oh, there's another narrative out there, and you know we're doing we're both doing storytelling work from different perspectives, um, mm -hmm. and and yes, and you're right, you know the the intimidation of someone who you know, he's a, an award-winning journalist and with lots and lots of experiences, et cetera, and, and very busy, obviously. Um, but, you know, you reached out and then that person saw the connection. Um, and I think that's a really good lesson is, you know, when you're reaching out with people to people that you don't actually know, um, look for the connection and then mm -hmm. see if that if that works. I get so many, so many emails, you know, marketing emails, and, and it's, there's these little, uh, I've noticed there's a trend um, slight tangent here, but I think people will relate mm. uh, because my email is getting, my inbox is getting fuller and fuller of emails that have like a little facetious first paragraph or humorous thing, or maybe there's like an image or a video even. And, you know, sometimes I'll click on it, but if there isn't any effort made in terms of finding a connection between me uh -huh. and the person who's sending it, then I, I delete it. I don't even respond uh, because I, I, and I get so many of those. So I, I think- There's a lot you know, of bots out there that's trying to make friends with me. And that's right. uh, like, maybe that was what I had in my favor. I was I was not a bot and I, I want to just have a good conversation. I was just yeah. intrigued with the irony. Yeah. So yeah, I, great. Uh, there's, there was, and it wasn't a whole marketing scheme. It was just like, sit down. We want to just talk to you. And, and yes, it's connected to our work, but it was more curiosity than anything that was driving my ability to reach yeah. out to him. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Well, and that kind of reminds me of what we're going to talk about a little bit later with intentions, right? So what's next is uh, Psychological Safety with Sona Charette. That was another popular episode um, of 2022. Um, what did you, what do you remember from that one? What's, uh, what's something that, uh, that springs to your mind? that that is a valuable term and something that we should be teaching organizations about engagement of what how people are interpreting their environment um, their communications and the impact seen and unseen that it has so mm -hmm. it is really important and for that we went to england to speak to uh the the leader right. of that topic area yeah 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 i i agree and you know what what the thing that i remember is um, she she was talking about these, uh, we, we covered a lot of ground uh, because from that term psychological safety, it is such a, I think I had heard the term, uh -huh. but what this episode does a really good job of is defining it a little bit better uh -huh. and getting people to understand what does it cover. And so I remember that we actually covered quiet quitting, we covered the great resignation, uh -huh. we, came, we covered the VUCA term, uh, oh, yeah. you know, a volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous world that we live in and how to deal with that. And the thing that stood out for me was uh, one of the, the strategies that um, Sona talked about in terms of creating a, a psychologically safe work environment um, was the ability of leaders to ask questions that they don't know the answers uh, for and that mm -hmm. they, you know, is kind of show a little bit of vulnerability in terms of I, I don't actually have the answers. And I'm now asking you questions with that intention of getting some answers from others. Uh, and rather than sort of, and I'm not afraid of admitting it, admitting that. And, and I thought that was a, a really valuable lesson for, for all those that, you know, are listening who um, are dealing with teams and managing teams, especially in a time of change or in a time of crisis or, or really any kind of work environment where, you know, we are, we are living in this VUCA world as, as we talked about on the podcast. But you bring up a very good point at the beginning of this little segment about doing your homework on terminology because there's so many buzzwords in the press and it gets used in so many ways. And we, a lot of times, um, the definitions are not explained um, in the roots of why these terms exist. So I think on a lot of the terminology that are panned around the office or in general conversations, go home and do some research about it and see um, what it means. So I think I'm really proud of us for you know doing a deeper dive in some of these buzzwords, and then it, it incentivized me to write an article as well. So right. lots of time to do homework and, and that uh, that came out of that episode. So that was uh, yeah. times and opportunities I should to do uh, some homework. Yeah, great. Uh, well, go go and listen to that one. Um, 
<laughs> We're not too biased. No, no, no exactly. Exactly. Um, next is dialogue. Um, oh. I was I was interested in seeing that one because we we actually had two different takes on the same term. One was with our guest uh, Sira Abinoza out of Barcelona, another person that you uh, reached out to, and um, again without necessarily having any. What was your connection actually? Maybe you can. Okay, uh, I was memory. doing homework for a talk I was giving, and I wanted to research the term Socratic dialogue before I used it in a sentence and uh, put my foot in my mouth. So I went on and I found her on TED Talks, and then I was like, hmm, she looks interesting, and I did. What I've been doing lately is like, hi, you don't know me. <laughs> Reached out to LinkedIn. I said she inspired me. And and then I realized, you know, we have a podcast. Let me invite her. So it was another episode of like, let me take a chance. Let me invite mm. her. So for this, yes, we went to Spain. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, what, what really stood out in that one for me was just the, uh, and you can actually watch videos on on Sierra's website. The incredible. Inst yeah, the Institute for Socratic Dialogue is the um, is the name of the organization that she founded, and um, and of course she's a, she's also a professor um, at a couple of business schools in Barcelona. But uh, one of the things that really impressed me and has stuck with me is her work in in prisons. Um, you know, talking to to people who were part of quote unquote well, you know, part of terrorist organizations, domestic terrorism, and and otherwise, um, and and really getting people to creating a dialogue between factions that would have never um yeah. certainly not just not spoken to each other but actually killed each other um and so and yet she manages to she managed to put them into the same room and create a dialogue there and and uh, and that's a lot of what we talked about is how do you do that how do you create that environment and it, i hadn't even made the connection between until now between uh, that episode on dialogue and what we just talked about with psychological safety. I think those are are, are nice episodes to to listen to uh, together around you know similar themes of how do you create an environment in which uh, you feel safe to actually have a dialogue, especially with people that on the face of it, uh, you have a lot of assumptions and judgments about. The other lesson for me was about being stuck when we think, oh, that conversation is impossible. Oh, those people are never going to come together. And that she had these two, com more than one compelling example, Northern Ireland, um, some work in multiple options in Spain that she was mm. doing with factions that were clearly um, really in tough times and really serious things uh, that she, she in the Northern Ireland, she took incredible risks just to even be part of that. So mm. it was a good thinking prompt to say, if we think we're stuck, those were situations that were stuck. And she found a way to make some small strides and important strides that communication did happen and was able to move forward in, in some important ways. Mm, I love that. Uh, yeah, that's it gives you perspective. I think that's uh, that's always important. It's kind of going back to what you were saying earlier, right? When you reached out uh, to someone you didn't know and um, it, it, I think, yeah, these kinds of examples help as well. It's, uh, well, if, if she can do that, you know, it's not, it's not such a big deal for me to write an email. Try more. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Fantastic. Well, yeah. So, so you can listen to that episode with Sira Ebenoza. And then there was an episode between me and Julian, uh, talking through some strategies around dialogue and creating dialogue. So I think those are, those are two that go nicely together. Um, the next one is the Connected Community with Cormac Russell. Uh, that's kind of a more recent one. We did that one back in October. Um, and certainly, you know, for me, uh, again, I think we traveled. Uh, so we've- we, Ireland we went, and England. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. We kind of went to, I mean, even though Zev is in the US, but, you know, South African. And so we, yeah. we kind of went there through his stories, certainly. Yeah. Um, and then, yes, and then London with with Sona and now with Cormac, uh, Sierra in Barcelona and now- um, uh, Dublin with uh, with Cormac uh, Russell, really fascinating person. Again, um, a great. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but Sierra Benoza has a great TEDx talk, and that's how you met her. Uh, but you know, Cormac, same thing, has a wonderful TEDx talk, and and I know that uh, that's, that's how I met that's him how then. you that's how you met him as well. So maybe maybe you can talk a little bit about that connection. I was again doing homework for a presentation, and I was looking for. Um, some quotes and I did my usual, you know, research and quotes of authors and playwrights. And then I went on Ted talks 
and he impressed me that his his um his philosophy that's built on instead of just talking about what's wrong to start with what's strong and build mm -hmm. listening around that so your audience and your collaborators look at opportunities so it repurposes the conversations and invites people in in a much more collaborative way so first i started just writing to him saying hi I, i'm doing this i'm quoting you to this conference and so he showed up on a slide and then he showed up in a conversation on linkedin and then he showed up with you when i said met somebody interesting we should talk to so amazing amazing work and he's just published a, a new book um it's really making some significant difference in his communities here and also um and around the world and in dublin mm. too yeah 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 just you know building on what you said about um focus on what's strong in the community and not what's wrong uh, you know through our work at, at narrative uh, we've often seen that you know because we work with a lot of foundations and and advocacy organizations um and and it's true that you know th there is a tendency in a lot of organizations to sort of look at the community that they're in and what they're trying to change and impact and sort of say okay well that's what's wrong over here and therefore let's sort of eliminate that and replace it with something that's quote unquote right um, and and his take, which is you know very aligned, I think that's that's what came out of that episode too in that conversation was that there was such alignment between narrative and the community-based approach that Cormac employs uh, through his organization. And um, and one of those uh, the, the ways that we align is is sort of looking at this in a, in a similar way where you kind of build from where you are. You look at where people are at and. You know, you see what what works, and you know things that can be improved. But really, you focus on what works, and and you build from there, as opposed to saying we got to redo everything, uh, or or this is what's never going to work with with you all. Because, and it makes a lot of sense, I think. And what I kind of took away from that episode with, um, you know, for the for the business world, is that you know you you often land in a new team. If this is a new job or or you're now in a managerial position when you weren't before and and suddenly you know you've got to deal with what's there and and i think there is also a tendency um you know we we can see it with one of the big uh, social media firms now to just <laughs> move everybody out get everybody out of there and every dissenter oh, goes in the yes. yeah and so you know but rather than than you know, jumping to that conclusion that everyone must go and needs to be replaced, look at what's actually working, look at what's strong in that team and play to those strengths. Um, I, I think that's such a valuable lesson coming from this community-based approach, which maybe on the face of it to our listeners doesn't seem like it's related to business, but I, I saw lots of connections with the business world. Oh, for sure, because we... Um in our culture here we can be very much us versus them you know here's the new team here's the winning team here's the old team and it takes time and strength of character to much be more collaborative and also what that approach what i interpreted from it was it's more inclusive because it's voices and ideas and input comes from different levels because they're part of the conversation mm -hmm. um and i think that's an important thing to remember uh, that the person uh, if you're consulting if you're working on projects a lot of the solutions are in the room they might not have been clearly verbalized or they may uh, have not been fully tweaked out but there's a uh, lots of things that can happen when there's dialogue and somebody's given permission to talk and and then also important uh, permission for us to sit back and listen and take in perspective um, he does talk in his work a lot about wrong things happening or missteps or good intentions and bad solutions because that didn't happen. So yeah, lots of, I think it, all of this can be applied to any part of our working life and personal life too. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and, you know, putting in the, um, the storytelling piece there, um, which we talked about in that episode too, uh, Cormac had some some great stories coming mm. from these communities and, and sort of the impact. But you know, just to, as a reminder for our, for our listeners that when you are entering a new situation or a situation of change, storytelling is really helpful because you can look at what you know who's there 
and where are they? But one of the ways that you know where people are at is by asking them, you know, what their story is and, and mm -hmm. you know, looking at how are they listening and how are they telling stories? What stories are they telling? Um, and so really you're, you're coming in as an observer almost and you're putting on your listener hat first. And then, you know, you all come up as a, as a team with a, a collective story that everyone believes in um, rather than sort of imposing your own story on on everybody else without sort of looking at what's what's the story that's already there um so yeah and folks i've found in organizations are then in a uh, position to be more patient and listening to what you or i bring to the table because we took the time to listen and right. acknowledge their experience and value so it's not about being competition it's about appreciation and respect that there's always another perspective or context. There's always a backstory about why something was working or not working or, um, mm. or where things could work if we gave it a chance. Yeah, yeah. So uh, this is a great transition to our, our last one, uh, mo last most popular episode, um, which was New Year's intentions versus resolutions, uh, which was way back in January <laughs> of this year. Uh, that was, I think it must have been our first uh, episode of the year, actually, because it was January 8th, um, if you want to go back and, and listen to that. Um, but, you know, I, I say it's a great transition because those words you just used, you know, respect and appreciation, those are intentions. You know, you come in with that intention of being respectful, um, of, of being appreciative, and very early on in, in on this episode, um, you you mentioned you know that connection, right? And mm -hmm. looking at um, you know what are the connections that I have with people that I don't know, and then I reach out. But your intention is connection, right? It's not, and you even said it, right? It wasn't about promotion or marketing or sales or anything like that. It's about it. It's about. It doesn't mean that we don't want marketing or promotion or sales, but it's certainly, <laughs> but it, it's not the first thing we think of, right? Yeah. And and I think and and the reason for that is that that is actually what creates a connection between human beings, right? And mm -hmm. and we're um, we're human. I, I heard this um, many times over the, over this year in particular that we're human beings more than we are human doings before we are human doings. So so will first be, and then we'll do something. Um, and so, so I think, you know, having an intention allows you to bring a way of being uh, that's going to be different than a resolution. A resolution is all about the to do's. It's, it's, you know, I want to, or it's about goals really. Um, and, and we've seen, and that's what that episode was about, that what prompted us to do, to do an episode about resolutions and intentions was that there are many studies that show that resolutions don't work, um, that people actually don't. Um, they might like go to the gym once or twice in, in January and then it's over, right? Um, they don't get to that to that resolution that they talked about to everybody. Um, and it's it sort of has this um, effect, this negative effect on people of making them feel embarrassed or bad or, you know, that and so, well, Failing. next year I'll do better. Failing. Yeah. <laughs> Failing exactly, exactly. Um, so, so yes, intentions versus resolutions. Uh, I think it it does it has worked a lot better for us, right, Jules? But hold up, I I have I'm excited because I totally forgot about that episode. I remember all the other names and I remember all the people, the other people that have been speaking to. I forgot about that episode, and you know what? We did both. We mm. kept a resolution that we're going to show up. Well, we started twice a month, and then we're once a week. And uh, we've been yeah. doing this. So we we. So we did both. We had intention and we had a resolution. <laughs> we, we, we're, a, we're a prime example. They can live in peace together with their, yeah. their right. I love that. Yay. I love that. Yay. Maybe there's a, maybe there's a kind of order to it, right? It's it's like, a, here's my intention. And, and out of that intention comes a resolution. Um, Plus we love what we're doing too. Yes. So that makes it a little easier. For listen, that helps. You know, that helps. Maybe, um, you know, in that sense, the effort, yes. But it was an act of joy yeah. for me to connect and see it happen, and people show up and take right. you know, a call and a message and have another Zoom meeting. So. Yeah, and then lo and behold, people downloading our episodes, which is yeah, always that's uh, cool too. a treat. Showing up <laughs> that's <laughs> right. That's right. of the world. Yeah, that's right. Um, well, this is this is great. Uh, so, like we said, you can go and and uh, listen to all these episodes and more 
on our website, narrative.com and ARATIV.com backslash podcast. That's where you'll find all of these recordings with all of these wonderful guests. Uh, we will, our intention is to continue to, uh, to do this, these episodes on a weekly basis in 2023. Um, and uh, we, may, we may skip a week here or there because of holidays and things like that. Um, but, uh, but that is the intention is that we will have that consistency in place and really to bring connection to everyone. And, and uh, this word that we keep using, which is engagement, uh, we, we are here to engage people and help people engage their own employees and their leaders and their customers. Um, so if you have any questions at all, as listeners of, the podca of this podcast about our own process of, of listening and storytelling and how we apply that in businesses so that we can engage and connect people, uh, don't hesitate. Again, narrative.com, that's where you can go. There's a contact form and you can you can sign up for lots of different things. So uh, really wonderful again, Jules, to, to have you on here and, uh, and happy holidays to you and happy new year. Here's to new stories and showing up and connecting some more in the on the other side of uh, the year. So thank you. It's been a pleasure. It's a lot of fun. Thank you so much. And to our listeners, happy, happy holidays, happy new year. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, you'll see us again in 2023. For more information on the narrative listening and storytelling method, and how it can help your business, go to narrative.com.